faith by its nature becomes a culture. It takes over your whole life. And when it does, everybody notices it, which is the whole point. If I'm only a part-time Christian, how am I going to preach to anybody? Does that make us countercultural? Hey, of course. Do you have to be countercultural and obnoxious? No. But you've got to be countercultural. See, and so I remember that sincere faith in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I'm confident lives also in you. The same faith finally reaching fulfillment in belief in Jesus Christ. It's a different vision, isn't it? See, after 2,000 years, well, we have the Jewish faith, and we have the Christian faith. Then why do we keep reading the Old Testament? Because it's our faith. Okay. That's what I say. But because, you see, so he's Jewish. So he should be circumcised. Paul says, you're right. And he could never take them along with him. If he weren't, there'd be probably, the Jewish people would be causing enough problems. Now they'd have a real reason. For this reason, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. So, laying hands on Timothy and praying over him gave him the grace of ordination. Gave him a new conformity to Christ. Gave him a new power to preach the gospel. Stir up in you, you see, the gift, if I'm not mistaken, this is charisma. It is. It's charisma here. Yeah. The gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. In another place, he speaks about having this gift through the word of prophecy and the imposition. Because the church has to call. When a young man is standing there, and uh, the, the deacon is reading out to the bishop, uh, you know, Reverend Father, I uh, want to present to you these men uh, who are offering themselves to be priests. And the bishop says, do you know that they're worthy? The deacon replies, representing the whole seminary as far as we can, and as far as human knowledge is able to know the secret hearts of men, we do know that they are ready. So then they call John Jones. Here, call. This is the vocation. The church at this moment says, John Jones, I am here. And he answers. That's the vocation. He's had a vocation. He's been working maybe like, gee, and me, I was about five years old. You know? But it happens at that moment. John Jones, ad sum, I am here. That's the vocation. The church says, John Jones, step forward. And through this word of prophecy and the laying on of my hands, you will be a priest. And that means you will have a new ontological bond with Christ. It will affect the very being of your spirit. That's why you will stand at the altar and say, this is my body, this is my blood. This is Christ working through you. And when you preach, it is Christ preaching through you. So it's this old remind you of the grace that you have through the imposition of hands. And as I say through the other text, through prophecy, now we'll stir it up. Why? Because God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather 
one of power and love and self-control. Power? How are you going to preach the Word of God unless you're empowered? You just stand there and say stuff, but it won't do but it won't penetrate hearts. So do be not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me a prisoner. You're a friend of that guy? How many times does he go to jail? I mean, you're the other friend of a crook, a disturber of the peace, some kind of nut, and you're his friend. You see? I'm trying to make this alive for you. You see? Because it's in the, this, is, this is the Word of God working through these two men. Or don't be embarrassed about me for a prisoner for his sake. I mean, you're the friend of a jailbird. Surely the government knows what it's doing when it locks out people like that. No, it doesn't. But bear your share of hardship for the gospel. You want to sign on to preach the gospel? Get ready for hardship. Name of the game. You want to play pro football? Expect to get banged around a bit. So bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He's exhorting him.